Hi friends, I'm Nicholas Sacciani. Let's talk backstage. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about the specific rigging systems in theater and especially how they work. Specifically, we have two types, hemp and counterweight. Hemp is also called rope and they are broken into five systems or at least five that I want to talk about. A rigging system is any type of system that lifts an object from one end operated from another end, usually off stage. So let's start simply with a single line system. This is a single rope with a loft block, a head block, possibly a mule block or few in between, and then you have a place to tie it off. And so if you've ever had a treehouse or looked out your window and tied a basket to a rope and pulled that up, that is a very basic single line system. Now that's one line, but what if we have to lift up a curtain or need a few things to lift at the same time with one operator? That becomes a multiple line system or multi-line system. We are really good at naming things in theater. This system uses two or more lines attached to the same load each line connecting to its own loft block, connecting to one multi-sheaf head block. And then sometimes these lines are tied off to a single line called the purchase line that is for the rigger to operate it with. And ultimately, they need a place to tie off as well, which is going to be a cleat or a pin rail. It's the same idea as a single line. That single line just splits in order to pick up the load at several different points. I mentioned in a previous video that rigging systems usually are permanently installed in a theater. So what happens if you want to rig something outside of the permanently installed rigging system. This would be a spot line rigging and can be either a single line or multi-line system. You can put a rigging system anywhere that you can put a pulley. So those three systems, the single line, multi-line, and spot line, they are all considered hemp or rope systems. The key thing about that is that the line has two ends, one with the rigger and one that's attached to the load. And those ends stop at those points. Now, sometimes the load that we're trying to lift might be too heavy for a rigger to safely hoist. So we'll add some weight to the hauling end, which is where the rigger is, to help the rigger out. This is considered a counterweight. Now I mentioned a counterweight system, but this specific application is still a part of the rope slash hemp system. Because you're adding the weight just to help out a little bit, you're not adding the weight to do the work for you. That would be in a counterweight system. A counterweight system is slightly more complicated. We have two real systems here that we use. First is the single purchase system. This is the most common system in theaters. It's used when there's a clear wall space on the side of the stage from the floor height to the grid height that matches where the load is going. You have the same amount of room off stage vertically that you do on stage for the load to travel up into the grid. This system, how it is all set up, we're going to take this little journey together. You have the batten, which is holding whatever we're lifting. It's usually a set piece or a curtain or lights. Then along several points of the batten, evenly spaced, we have wire rope lift lines. All of these lift lines have their own loft block or pulley, which these lines then travel through those, through maybe a couple mule blocks to keep it all neat and clean, into to the head block. And usually it's a multi-sheaf head block for the same amount of load lines that you have going through. So after passing through the head block, they connect down to the counterweight arbor, which holds, you guessed it, the counterweights. So this counterweight is attached to what we call the T-bar guide rails, which is just kind of like its own track going up and down vertically so that when we move with everything up and down, these weights don't sway wildly, which would probably send those weights all over the place. And that's pretty dangerous. So at the bottom of that arbor, we have attached to that the hand line or purchase line, which travels down through the tension block, which keeps this whole system taut and gliding smooth. And then that purchase line travels up through a lock rail, which is just this little lever that pinches off the rope and keeps it in place when we walk away from it, making sure that nothing falls on our dear actors on stage, because unless you're the Phantom of the Opera, then you don't want to do that. But also if you're the Phantom of the Opera, you're working on a single line system, which isn't this. So I digress. Let's get back on topic. So the hand line or purchase line comes out of the lock rail, travels back up to the head block, and then back down to the arbor, creating that loop so that the hand line is actually pulling the arbor back and forth, which is weighted evenly with what's on the stage, and that is going to follow and do the opposite of what the arbor is doing. Finally, we have what is called the loading bridge, which is off stage next to the rail. Usually it's up higher on like a second story, and this is where we add and take off the weight from the arbor based on how heavy the load is that we are hoisting. Basically what we're doing is we're taking taking the multi-line hemp system and creating this taut loop connected to a counterweight. The idea is the same as a counterweight scale. You can lift the one side and the other side just goes exactly where you tell it to. And what this whole crazy system does for us as riggers, because it is weighted evenly, it makes it easier for us to operate. So the counterweight is doing most of the system of lifting that thousand pounds of weight and not the riggers. Okay, so it may not be a thousand pounds. That's a whole lot. But a set piece or a curtain system can get pretty heavy more than most people 
people can lift on their own. So this takes a huge chunk of that weight off of the rigger shoulders, puts it on the counterweight system. Think about being the kid on the seesaw. If the kid on the other side is your weight, you get a nice smooth ride up and down. It's really easy. If they're heavier, you're going to be stuck at the top and it's a lot harder for you to operate. If you're the heavier one, you're not going to be able to get off the ground. That's the idea of the counterweight system. So this is the most common type of rigging system in theater. It has replaced a whole lot of multi-line hemp systems because it's safer, because that even weight system reduces the risk of a load falling wildly out of our rigger's control. Reducing, not removing. I have been in situations where you might be unloading or loading weight and you might lose control. Those situations are very scary. Then we have a double purchase system, which is used when some obstruction prevents the full travel of the arbor from the grid so you don't have the same amount of space for the batten to go up and down as you do offstage, or if you want to take some of that backstage space back. This system is almost identical to the single purchase system, except there's another pulley attached to the top and the bottom of the arbor. That's two separate pulleys that the lift lines and purchase lines travel through. This allows the arbor to move half the distance and at half the speed of the batten, taking up half the space. It also means that the arbor, instead of being the same weight as the batten, needs to be twice the weight for it to work. Thus the double name. Basically, instead of a relative simple loop, we get a bit of an S shape that the line takes in order to accommodate for the lack of vertical space. Theta people can be so crafty. So I know I said two types, hemp and counterweight, broken into five systems, but I want to mention one more type because there's always more. Hemp slash rope systems and counterweight systems are both manually operated, at least how I just explained them. But there are also versions of both types that use automation using hydraulics and mechanical winches and other computer operated machinery. So the computers are still overseen by humans and humans are pushing the go buttons. They're just not the ones physically pulling the rope anymore. This is very common these days on Broadway where automation has taken over a lot of the effects, but regional theater and community theater and high schools, most of them still use these manual systems of rigging because automation, like most cool things, is super expensive and either manual or automated, you're still achieving the same effect. So replacing these manual systems with automation is lower on the list of priorities for a bunch of these theaters that might not have the funding that Broadway does. So that's all I have for the basics of theatrical rigging systems and how they work. If you have anything you think I missed or that you have encountered in a different country, in a different space, or just anywhere else, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. There are constant innovations to this type of thing happening in theater because we're always trying to do different types of things. Make people fly, make people disappear, doing all this magic type of stuff. But these are the basic standards that we have in theaters. But again, they might be different from place to place, country to country. So that's why I'm saying if it's different for you, comment below. Let other people see what the differences are. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Bye, friends. These videos are made for educational purposes. Hopefully you learned something or it reinforced something you may already know. Now, this is just one way to do this and there may be other ways to do what I've explained in this video. And I would love to hear about those ways in the comments. Just remember to be kind as you share your own experiences and expertise on the subject. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up up, like and subscribe and hit that little bell button to be notified of the next video.